Now we know with some clarity that consistent night shift increases your risk of becoming diabetic and obese. You also develop heart diseases because of the increased stress levels. Then there's compromised immunity overall. You also have your mental health impaired by night shift. None of these put the nails in the coffin, but a recent publication by the World Health Organization does. You see, this publication puts the risk of developing cancer from night shifts at the same level as, as someone who smokes tobacco or, or someone who smokes cigarettes. I know this sounds scary and I'm not asking you to email your manager asking for an exemption from night shifts, but I feel like for people who are abandon the comforts of their homes and head out to hospitals and the wards to take care of sick people like nurses and doctors or security officers who abandon their homes and head out into the world just to protect the rest of us and people like bus drivers factory workers who go out to work in the night and keep the system running i feel like these dangerous side effects is rather a higher price to pay for the kind of sacrifice that these people have to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis truth is you are at a higher risk for premature death with night shifts in the mix which is why some insurance companies will ask you to pay higher for life insurance if they realize that you are a night shift worker my name is Manasseh tete and i'm a nurse working in the uk nhs and if you chance upon this video i'll tell you why night shifts are bad for you and what you can do to protect yourself you see i genuinely wish this was simple to understand but it turned out to be a rather complex case of big medical jargons making it unappealing and less practical to understand and so in my quest to fully understand the concept of night shifts and the dangers it poses to the human body i decided to take the cdc course for nurses on night shifts and those who do long hours which is part of the reasons why this video took so long to make and boy i was blown away by what i found out so how does night shifts cause cancer in and of itself that's quite strange to hear you see a few years back the who stated that they had discovered enough evidence to label night shift work as a probable carcinogen which means that night shift could cause cancer our bodies have an internal clock which control our sleep wake cycle over the 24 hour period this sleep wake cycle over the 24 hour period is known as a circadian rhythm and it is principally influenced by light this circadian rhythm is orchestrated by a harmonious interplay of naturally occurring hormones which primes our bodies to sleep when it's dark and causes us to wake up at the sight of light even with our eyes shut maintaining this all-important circadian rhythm is not just important for ensuring proper cellular health but it also ensures that the organs which secrete these hormones keep working uninterrupted. The problem with night shifts is that it disrupts this harmony and turns the circadian rhythm on its head. And even when there is a rhythm correction after a few days to weeks, our body cells does take a hit. One of these cells is the natural killer cells, also known as the NK cell. You see, during night shifts, we completely eliminate nighttime sleep and sleep during the day, restricting the time allowed for sleep to about four to five hours. This sleep time reduction greatly lowers was natural killer cell activity to an average of about 72 percent research indicates that nk cells play a substantive role in killing tumor cells and having their activity reduced by this much places the individual at almost a two times risk of developing cancer speaking of cancer prevention let's talk about melatonin melatonin is a hormone secreted by the pineal gland in the brain now this hormone melatonin regulates the sleep wake cycle ensuring that we sleep when we have to and we wake up when we should night shifts however affect the secretion of melatonin because melatonin is a hormone whose secretion is entirely exclusive to the dark. I do applaud Thomas Edison for some of his great work but this is where my problem comes in. How we have used his light bulb to invade the night and completely get rid of the dark and ensure that people kept working all night long. Even though night duties is good for, for productivity and for the big companies that see this happen, the human body suffers the most. In the face of consistent light throughout night shifts, there is no secretion of melatonin at all. It is also a potent tumor suppressant and in the face of melatonin suppression it was discovered that women who did night shifts were at a significantly increased risk of developing breast cancers whilst women who had breast cancers in the past or present demonstrated rapid growth of tumors which was higher than those who were not doing night shifts in a research published by the CDC. The risk is similar for men with three in five studies confirming an increased risk for prostate cancer in men who did night shifts over a 20 year period. That's not all. World famous sleep researcher Matthew Walker also indicated quite clearly that 
men who did night shift over a 20 year period had a reduced testosterone levels that was the same as someone who was 10 years their senior and reduced testosterone levels means smaller testicles literally night shift leaves your balls smaller and smaller balls means fewer sperms and then fewer sperm count and on and on and on you know where this is going when working night shifts your drive for wakefulness decreases causing strong feelings of sleepiness especially between 2 a.m and 6 a.m at the end of the night shift workers are at a maximum risk for sleepiness due to a high sleep pressure and a low circadian drive for wakefulness this results in micro sleeps during the commutes back home and have been documented as a major cause of road crashes and the internet is replete with news items detailing road crashes caused by either a nurse or bus drivers on their way back home after a night shift because night shift turns your natural sleep wake cycle on its head your body tries to work really hard to keep you awake and it does so by putting you into stress mode now this results in an increase in sympathetic nervous activity which means the release of the stress hormone cortisol and the hunger hormone ghrelin what cortisol does is that it increases your heart rate and blood pressure and this happening over a continuous period of time explains why you are very prone to cardiovascular disease as a result of night shifts ghrelin on the other hand increases your craving for carbohydrates so if you find yourself wanting to have more sandwiches from the fridge at the hospital or on the ward during the night shifts it is the result of ghrelin it is not the nurse's fault the price to pay however is the increasing commonality of midline obesity among nurses as a result of delayed digestion and the buildup of glucose in the bloodstream as a result of insulin resistance and that's one way you become diabetic and by the way a subscription to the channel will be terrific brain disease and mental health impairment when we sleep our brain gets the chance to undertake dna repair and inflammation regulation an altered circadian rhythm and limited sleep time means that our brain has to put up the essential activity of DNA repair and inflammation regulation. Our bodies have to put up with the dangerous effect of living with the buildup of more defective DNAs and unregulated inflammation. This has been linked to diseases such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's and mood disorders such as anxiety and depression. It is that bad. If you're feeling exhausted from the bad news already, I am too. And so I've decided to start talking about the solutions. What are some practical steps that a worker and that going night shift take to minimize the effects of night shifts. I understand this is a video and I'm unable to go through every bit of strategy here in much detail. So I've created a really detailed newsletter outlining this step in very crisp and concise form. I will encourage you to sign up for the newsletter which is entirely free with a link down in the description. But for this video, let's continue with what we can accommodate within the time we have. The good news is there are proven strategies to help the night shift worker have a long, healthy and fulfilling career. And more importantly, have an equally healthy retirement besides what is the point in having a long and healthy career and having your retirement cut off by it by ill health or worse of death truth is workers are able to better adjust their sleep times if they had some control over their work schedule but this only remains a dream so what can workers do in the face of this adversity rest breaks after every three to four hours of work planned naps lasting 15 to 30 seconds in the fit for purpose break rooms a phenomenon which is not even available in the uk and other developed countries and staff performance assessments are some strategies that employers can put in place to ensure the lot of workers are improved overall but what can shift workers do for themselves design your sleep to fit your work schedule having a consistent sleep time has been found to improve your sleep overall whether it is during the day or during the night if you work the night shift then it is important to start prepping your body to sleep one to two hours before your bedtime if you permanently did the night shift then it is essential to start prepping your body for sleep the moment you close from work this involves reducing expo your exposure to light one to two hours before your usual bedtime having a light snack instead of binging on spicy and heavy meals and reducing the amount of water you drink within two hours of your bedtime. These measures reduce sleep distractions that come from indigestion and the irresistible urge to use the bathroom during sleep cycles. These strategies can be a game changer in helping you get a good sleep after work. Do these four things in addition. A. Assess your workload. If you work over 12 hours within a 24 hour period or work over 60 hours within a seven day period, then it is time to take a pause and assess your hustle 
with a fine tooth comb, I bet you will see some deep dark secrets hiding away. There are certainly unavoidable consequences. I know the fast income retire early movement or otherwise known as fire is a worthy pursuit, but I do not think it's worth trading your health for. B. Be sure to keep the bedroom dark. Making up for the sleep you lost while on the night shift is essential and keeping the ambience just right is vital in this regard. This is where light blocking drapery comes in handy. Blinds may not serve a good purpose as they allow too much light to come in sometime. More opaque window coverings come in handy and if you want to go extreme, try using foil. Light blocking eye masks are inexpensive but, but they serve a very good purpose. I have linked a personal favorite in the description below. Try it and you'll be glad you did. Televisions, cell phones, wall hangings and shiny wall clocks are definitely not welcome to see in the bedroom. C. Stick to using the bedroom for the two S's. That is sleep and sex. Avoiding activities other than sleep and sex in the bedroom. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. Right. It's a powerful way to prime our brain to associate the bed with sleep and the other one that follows. This makes falling asleep rather easy once we retire to the well-conditioned bedroom kept at an optimal temperature no higher than 17 degrees Celsius. As you wouldn't sit at a dining table waiting to get hungry, same way there is no point having to retire to bed and keep tossing and turning just waiting to fall asleep. And the last but not the least is exercise. If you engage in yoga, light to moderate intensity sexual activity have all been found to improve sleep as they induce some some form of exhaustion that causes you to sleep off rather easily like food sleep is a basic need if not more important and while none of these steps will prove to be a single silver bullet that is formidable in and of itself i believe a good combination of all the steps i've mentioned above will prove to be a formidable arsenal as for the football team maybe someday thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video i believe you'll be interested in finding out the top 10 countries for nurses in 2023 by watching this video up there